Hello, good afternoon. How's it going? Okay, so we are going to be dotting up this beautiful Christmas tree today. Today I did decide to make this just a wee bit smaller uh, than last time. And I hope we can get through this quick and easy for everybody. Okay, so let's start out super quick. If you have not already got a hold of this design, please either drop over to the Facebook group, uh, the Mandala Dot Art for the True Beginner, because I do have this in the file section. If for any reason you are not in the group or want to get it after, unable to, whatever the situation is, go ahead and drop me an email over at sylvanmistdesigns at gmail.com and I'll be happy to get it for you. Once this is printed out, do whatever you like with it. Uh, you can trace this. As you can see, it's dark enough to be seen through the paper. So you can just trace it um, onto another surface. You can drop this into something like a, um, a cover or a even behind a piece of glass, sort of whatever you want to do. I will go ahead and explain some additional examples at a later point of how you can use this for additional practice. Okay, but for now, I am going to take and lay the paper over the top. And I've got a couple small paper clips. I'm just gonna throw those in here. All right, I just wanna make sure that it's not gonna slip. I have four, but I probably don't need the four. Okay, now, next thing we're gonna want is your paint. Now, I grabbed the three that I liked color-wise, and I have three different brands. This one is an off-brand. It's a little older. It's a little bit thicker. Um, I've got a standard apple barrel and a deco art here. Now, if you don't necessarily have three different shades, you can make them. Just, you know, get a dark one, add a little bit of white, whatever you want to do. I do suggest at least two shades of green just to give it a little bit of depth. And then for the decorations, I have the Telics. I have the Royal Ruby and Rose Gold. And then I just grabbed, I love the spiced berry color, and then I grabbed a nice sharp blue. Feel free to do whatever you like. Um, I do suggest, however, no matter what you choose, um, grab at least one bright color. You don't have to use metallic, but at least one bright color seems to really make everything pop. For tools, okay, so these are my go-to. I love my dot art tools. I like the little nail art ones, they're super simple. I'm also gonna be utilizing these ones here. Um, probably not so much the two larger ones, especially since I've scaled down my print a little bit. It's about 60% instead of 100, it's not a full page. Um, but I'll probably be using these two small acrylic rods the most. And then these as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now these ones are really heavy. Um, I, I don't use them very much anymore, um, but if you have these, I've got that as well. All right. I've already loaded up the three colors of green on my palette. I do not use a medium. I am not using anything additional there. Okay. But let's go ahead and get started. Now I think um, that it should be clear enough and bright enough that you can still see the pattern through this that I'm using here. Okay, I am gonna start right at the top. Now, what we're gonna do, you can kind of go in for whatever color you like, um, sort of somewhere middle-ish ground, okay? You do not, I will say to start, you do not have to follow the pattern exactly as I do. This, because of its kind of unique shape, it's not a standard mandala, so you do not have to follow me exactly, okay? I'm gonna use this one here to start with. Uh, this is a 2.6 for this tip. And I'll kind of go midway as well as the, the green color too. Now, we're gonna start out just standard dots. Right, nothing special, nothing fantastic. 
All right, so just make sure that when you dip your paint, you want the bowl to sit about halfway, if not a little bit more, into the paint so you can still see the top of the bowl there, all right, in the paint. And then what I do, uh, with this one is a little bit weird, this, this top curled one, um, but I'm gonna start, and again, if you can see this, right where the two lines touch, okay? I'm gonna put my biggest dot there, okay? And then we're gonna dip back in, again, at the same level. All right, when you dip back in, you don't wanna cover the ball. Go right back to the same level you were, okay? And then we're just gonna follow this line, okay? Go back in again. Now, the good thing on this one is you do not have to be so extremely concerned about consistency of your dot size because this is the Miss Vander Mandela. Okay, so it's gonna give you a little bit more freedom, especially if you're a beginner. Okay. So we're just gonna do this nice and slow. I'm just gonna take it right around the curve. Now, the only difference, once we get around, and I'm gonna this a smidge here for me. Okay. Now, we're going to go almost all the way around. We do not want to go the full way around with the same size of dot, but we're going to walk the end. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that once we get there. Just a nice gentle start. Once you've got about here, and we're gonna curl in. Now this one, we can see the top of the middle part of the ball still. We're gonna dip it again, and we're gonna give it a good dip, okay? I'm gonna go in all the way. It's nice and coated now, okay? Now, I'm gonna take, I like to lightly touch the dot before just to get a little extra paint off, and now we're gonna walk. Okay. And essentially all that means is we're going to put a dot down here. We're not going to redip, but we're just going to go into the next one. Okay. And then just continue around. Okay. All right. And that's that. Now I'm going to take a second and wipe my tool off. Always keep, I always keep just a little old rag here, a um, little hot water. Keep it moist. Once you've wiped it off, I usually just run the tip through my fingers just to make sure there's no excess water on the tip. Or if you have another dry cloth sitting next to you, whatever you want to do. All right, so we've got the first curl down. This one continues on around here. Now, one thing I'm going to say, we're going to go back in and we're only going to half dot that top. Okay, we're going to go back to a standard dot. Now, one thing I am going to stop here and say as I do this. Let's carry this all the way around. This particular pattern does have some pretty tight swirls, okay? And you may not actually be able to follow them that closely, especially depending on what size of tool you've chosen to do that particular swirl with. Don't worry about it, okay? The pattern that we're using does not need to be precise. Okay, we're gonna use it just sort of as a guideline. You do not have to follow it exact, right? Actually, I would say don't follow it exact. Use your imagination, get a little bit creative. Don't be afraid of it, okay. And I'm gonna walk that one in there. Okay, all right, so we've got our top. I'm gonna wipe that tool off. Personally, I'm going to keep the same size and I'm just going to go into, you know what, let's see. Let's go the light color here. All right. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just go about halfway in. Okay. Now this particular one, let me undo the bottom here. Now this one kind of curls in and then there's another one here. I'm just going to do this top part. And again, I'm going to start in the middle 
because the end in the middle of the curl, I know that's kind of, or at least for me anyways, that's kind of where you want to start. But the reason you don't want to do that is just for the fact that you want to walk those center dots. Now, if you're not comfortable or if you're not too good at dotting yet or you don't feel like you want to do that, that's fine. The other cheat that I can show you here is let's go through this curl and never be afraid just to change tool sizes. In the beginning, I know personally, I got really stuck on the idea that you had to stick with the size of tool that you picked up, right? If you wanted to walk your dots and you picked up this 2.1, then you needed to finish it with your 2.1 and that's absolutely not true, okay? Do whatever you need to do to make them smaller. Okay, so, let's see, this curls here. All right, so what will we do here? I'm gonna wipe off that tip and then I'm gonna flip it over because this side is a 1.5. And then I'm gonna take and dip down. And let's just do maybe two dots like that. Done, right? Never would know the difference, okay? You do not have to continue with what you started with. All right, now. For this one, Let's go dark. I'm actually going to go to a different size here. Oh, goodness, caught it just in time. Look at me. That's a 2.1. All right, and I'm going to go in dark. Okay, now this one starts here and kind of curls up. Okay. Now this part is going to be more or less the simple stuff, okay? Once we've got the consistency down of just laying the dots, you know, re-dipping each time the same depth. Normally I would advise if you are going to be doing a straight mandala pattern to where consistency is going to be extremely important, make sure that after you've done a few dots, there's there's not going to be a number okay um, but let's just say for example you've done a row like this 10 dots or so give or take just make sure that you're going back in and wiping your tool off because you do not want to have it eventually clump and change the size because as you look here i'm not wiping this one off because i don't care Right? This one is a nice, simple pattern. It's really loose. It's really fun. And it's not going to make a bit of difference. And I actually like the fact that the dots are sometimes a little uneven. Okay? They're not all exactly the same size. It's a little tiny bit more organic. Um, but you do want to watch that consistency on a typical mandala pattern. Uh, it's all about the consistency and purpose of it. Okay. Bring this one in here. Okay. All right. So now we've got that. Now, uh, let's see. I have another little swirl here. Okay. We can probably get away with doing that in this color here. And let's see. Do I want to? I'm going to change size. Uh, let's see. Do I want to change size? I probably don't. With the large majority of this right up to about the halfway point, we can probably get away with a 2.1 or a 2.5. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's get this going. Now, I'm going to do just this section here, and then we're going to try something else a little different. We're going to add some swooshes in here. We're going to add some designs. I do want to start this out and make sure that everybody knows exactly what they're doing. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to just dot together this whole thing, um, just, you know, simple dots all the way around, right? That's, I mean, let's be honest, that would be a little boring. Okay. 
but I do want to get you started. I want to make sure you kind of understand where you can go with this. The other thing is, depending on um, if you have kids, if you have grandkids, nieces, nephews, whatever, this is really cool to do with them too. Because while you're sitting here, you might be focused and we might be very patient. Um, I've given this to my seven-year-old daughter and let her go at it. And it's pretty cool to see what they come up with, right? Do the same thing, print it, um, you know, clip it down, paper clip it or staple it, whatever. Um, and let them come up with something. Um, I often enough give my daughter my own these tools because they're they're pretty heavy duty, right? They'll stand up really well. I have no worries that my daughter's gonna be snapping these in half or something. Um and just let her try it. She really enjoys it, and I think this might be a cool craft that parent and child could do totally together. Okay. All right, so now we've got this part. Okay. All right. One thing I will say about walking your dots, if you happen to get a little bit nervous about it, stop thinking about it. I think that's the biggest problem that I've run into. Okay, stop thinking. Because when you start thinking about, okay, well, is my dot gonna be spaced and I wanna do it here and I wanna do it here? No, just do, 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 just throw it down. Okay, it's gonna be much, much easier that way. All right, okay, so let's get this one in. I am gonna go up a size, I'm gonna drop into my three and we're gonna go back to this mid color green. And then I think this is gonna be an excellent point to get some swooshes in. All right, now this one connects right about here. I'm gonna make sure actually that that first dot kind of nestles itself between the other two there. That is not again required, but kind of like that. Okay, let's step this through. And this one, I'm not even dropping into the paint as much as the others. This one, I'm barely just touching the tip of the ball into my paint as I continually re dip. I mean, it's such a small amount of paint to begin with. We don't need to go crazy, um, especially since we are doing this just on standard printer paper. It's not like these will really cause any kind of problem. It's not gonna leak through, for example. Um, you can reuse this pattern on top of a standard page several times over because, like I said, it's not going to leak through. Um, if you get a little bit heavy handed on your swooshes uh, that are upcoming here, that could cause a problem if your paint is a smidge too thin. You know, it, it just because it's paper, um, you might see it leak through a little bit. Uh, so be a little careful about that. Okay, because the swooshes are going to take more paint than your standard dot. Okay. And if you want to learn swooshes, I gotcha. Okay, I'm going to teach you my way to do it. Not everybody does it the same way. Okay, but there's two ways essentially to do it. Long story short, there's different ways that you can dip and dot and all that stuff. Um, but essentially, I do it one way unless or if they're small. Okay. All right. Actually, back on the bottom. All right. Now, swooshies. When you do them, my opinion only, my opinion only, take two tools. All right. I use, it doesn't matter what the starting one is, but this one is my finishing. Okay. This little uh, orange one. Its tip is the 0 0.5 and it's the sharpest one that I have. Okay. Um, I have tried it with a needle tip and um, some other kind of, you know, nail 
tools and things and I didn't like it very much. Um, but this one has kind of a, a more triangular tip than the standard ball. Okay, so I use this one, All right? So if you're gonna do a, a swoosh, that is, I would say probably three, size three or larger, use two tools. If it is smaller than that, then I will use one tool, um, dot and swipe it down. Okay. Um, so for this one, so I'm going to put that green away. I'm going to take out my smallest rod. All right. And I'm going to go in with the same color here. Basically what you want to do is follow the curve. Okay. Again, this is, something that you can customize and do as you like but here's my suggestion okay so load up your rod here or tool or whatever you're using make sure that it's nice and heavily loaded okay more than you would normally on a typical dot we're gonna place it uh, let's see I'm gonna start here okay you want to place it next to but not on top of the line let's kind of put it here okay. let all that paint that you've gathered up drop down if you're not sure that it's enough add a little bit more go back in just touch the top really gently don't push all you're essentially doing is letting gravity pull that dot off the tool okay now Take the sharp tip and we're going to literally draw it. And I'm telling you, this is the, <laughs> this is the easiest way um, to do these, in my opinion. Okay, so start by taking the midline of the dot and go to one side. I suggest starting here away from your dotted edge because we're going to curl them a little. Okay, so start on this side, touch the paper and then drag this sort of where you want it to go. It's gonna run out of paint and that's fine. Grab the other side of the midline, follow the dots along, okay? Now that you've got this kind of shape-ish happening, go back in, you can touch the paper ever so gently and literally just pull the paint down. Okay. Ready? There we go. All right, now you got a swoosh. Okay. Yeah. We could probably do another one here, another small one. We could even bring it up this way if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to make this one a little smaller. So I'm going to go in with the thing here. So this is again my three. I'm going to keep them the same color again. You don't have to. It does not matter one single bit. I'm going to load that up extra heavy. I'm going to put mine here and drop that down. Again, I'm kind of just like tapping it or kind of going back and forth a little bit. Something like you would with a um, with a tea bag, right? When you're finished, uh, just gently kind of tap it just so gravity brings all of that paint down, right? And then again, midline of the dot, grab the side. Okay. And we're just going to kind of pull it. Okay. Ever so gentle. You don't physically want to be dragging the paint. You don't want to be scratching the paper or whatever surface it is. But you just want to be gliding it right across. All right, so now we've got two swishes on there. Okay. All right, so now uh, let's get in here with some of these other little designs. Let's do, I kind of want to keep my three colors relatively, ah, I don't want to say consistent, but sort of I want to alternate them a little bit going through here. Okay, so I'm going to do another light green one. This one is pretty small, so I'm actually going to flip over to the 1.5 side. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to fully cover that particular ball head. Okay. And then let's get right up here, right in the crack between these two. And then I'm just going to do this one. This one does have a really tight curl to it. You do not have to do the curl in the same way that the pattern shows us. And especially because if you chose a little bit of a larger tool size, you may not honestly be able to do it. Um, you're gonna get your swirl a little too squashy. And for this, don't actually be afraid to use a smaller tool, okay? If you get a little bit nervous about it, and you, you know, you don't have or don't want to use, um, say, the larger rods, for example, that's fine because unlike a typical mandala, you can have a lot of space in here. And the space is actually really nice because it's going to let you decorate the insides. Okay. So again, I've just walked the middle dot, just dot, 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 dot. Just don't read it. And don't think about it. Don't try to specifically space out your dots when you go through. Just, just go through, right? I mean, just think about it as if you're sitting there idly tapping, right? Just go through. <laughs> don't get too caught up in it, okay? All right. Um, so I'm going to grab a nice big one for this. All right. So we're going to go up another. You know what we could do? We can do it through here, okay? All right, and then we'll get another swoosh in. And then before I get too far into it, let's make sure that we know how to decorate. Okay. Now the other colors that I'm using, you notice they're not on my palette. And honestly, that's because we use such an itty bitty teeny tiny amount I mean even less than what we're using here when I've done this design or others that are similar to it I do not actually fill my palette with those colors I just dot straight out of the lid of my bottle okay and feel free to do that too you know whatever you've done uh this art, it can be so relaxing and so simple. Okay, we don't need to get carried away buying stock, buying palettes, right? Honestly, if you've got a paper plate or the lid of a jar or whatever the heck you want to use or just the lid of the paint itself, then use that. You know, especially if you're doing this with your kids, go grab a handful of Q-tips with or without the cotton buds. I suggest without it just because the fuzz is a little annoying sometimes, especially depending on the brand that you've picked. Um, so I suggest, you know, pulling the fuzz off of it. And then just use like the cap of a jar, like an old jar, clean that up or whatever. Um, and use that to put your paint in. Oops, you know what, I kind of put that one. I'm yakking over here and trying to see my lines underneath and I kind of made a, hmm, that's not round. That's okay though. No one's going to notice and no one's going to care. Yeah. One thing that we also have to be conscious about uh, when we do dot art and mandala dot art especially is that the patterns themselves give you wiggle room. If you mess up, for the most part, nobody's going to notice because your eye is drawn elsewhere. So don't get caught up in it. Just keep going. Let's get it. Yeah, there's that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go up a size, 
for me, that's going to be the rod. And let's do another sluge. Now I have a curl that sits right here, so I'm going to have to do it on the inside. Okay, let's get that laid down. Wipe off my tool again. And then we're going to go right back over to the nice sharp tip. All right, grab the midline. Pull it up. Midline and pull right across. Okay, this one we even gotta drag a little farther. Okay, and then just like a paintbrush, we're just gonna curl it around. Okay. Now let's go down a size. Actually, let's see. I've got a swirl that's going to end right here. So I'm going to get that one in. And then I'll put one more swirl, I think. Okay, let me see if I can tell where this one comes out. Sort of here-ish. That's not exact because I can't see. There's a little bit of a shadow right there for me. So I can't see exactly if that's where it came out at, and I don't care. It's going to be just fine. It's right in the area. Okay, now I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do another swoosh, maybe, if I can find a nice place for one. And then we're going to start decorating this guy. Okay. Now take as much time or as little as you need to do these dots. I may be faster or slower than somebody else out there. Okay. This is probably my third or fourth one um, that I've done because I like doing them. And I might end up turning them into Christmas cards. Okay, so I'm going to go up to a three, and now I've got a little bit of space here. Okay, so let me get this dipped real nice and heavy. And I've got this beautiful space, and I'm going to chunk that down right there. Again, just a quick little dab, just like a tea bag. Let's wipe this tool off. And we're going to go right back over to the sharp one. And we're going to do that other swoosh. I think I'm going to get this one, if I can, tucked right up into this little crevice. There we go. So let me pause here for just a moment and we're going to do a bit of a decoration. Okay. Like I said, I have a couple different shades. Um, I've got some metallics here, which I really like. I'm going to get this one shook up here. I'm going to start with the, I'm going to start with this one. One of the other reasons to shake it is since I do it right out of the bottle lid open and make sure you have a nice little bed in there okay i'm gonna grab a tool and it doesn't matter which one this one was handy i'm gonna flip it over to the 1.5 side and you know what right about here there's a nice space okay so what i am gonna do yeah okay. let me just load this up and it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be anything all right um i'm gonna put it up here And then I'm going to put a dot on four sides of it. Okay. 
I'm going to wipe that off real quick. And then I'm actually going to flip this over to the other itty bitty tiny side. And then we're going to go one, two, three. I'm just going to walk. And these are itty bitty tiny, so I know you may not even be able to see them. <laughs> so let's get these in here. One, two, three. Okay. Dip that back in just real quick. Nope. Okay. All right. So now we've got a little sparkle in there. Okay. Put the lid back on that particular paint. The other thing that I've liked so far, really a lot, and I know it sounds a little bit odd, um, but it's buttermilk. Okay, or any kind of this light sort of beige. Okay, it makes great filler, great, great filler. Okay, same thing. I'm just gonna grab the lid and I'm gonna grab a tool. I don't even care what size it is. I'm gonna use the larger end of this one. Okay. And then I'm not even redotting it. So something kind of like a walk. Now on screen, I apologize. I know that that may not even be visible. It will be when you're done, All right? So that here, this little section, that's how I'm gonna be decorating the whole thing. Okay, so maybe let's go into the blue. Okay, again, I'm gonna get that just a little shake. And I'm going to take the same one. Let's go ahead up here because I've got this line sort of here. And let's leave a little bit of space. Oops. Now keep in mind, we kind of want to maintain that triangle shape of the tree. You can absolutely, and I do suggest making sure that you have designs along the edges here, um, but just be maybe a little mindful not to get too carried away because you don't want to stray way far away from the edges. You do want to keep that, that general triangular shape. All right, then I'm going to flip over here to the smallest one. My paint ran right here, amazingly enough. That's okay. All right, so now we've got that in there. So you've got a little decoration right at the top. All right, so now we have a couple other spaces. There is a nice swirl here, and then there is some dots in here. So I'm gonna get this one done just so I know what room I have. Now you can do this in kind of any way that you want. Um, you can do the whole tree and then backtrack and go in. It doesn't really matter. However, whatever you want to do. Okay, let's do this here. And again, we're just going to go back to a standard dot on this one. About halfway in.
So there's that. Now I've got another beautiful one that comes right out this way. And I actually think it might be a really good place for a good swirl um, or a good swoosh kind of coming right out here. So well, let's see. So we've got another that comes right across here. And so we've got this space. All right. So in this space, shaking this up here. This is my rose gold. And just for simplicity, I'm keeping the designs more or less the same for the little twinkles that are in the middle. I don't know what else you want to call them. Twinkles, I think, is sort of a good name. You can kind of experiment. A couple of times I tried to do like actual um, mandala patterns. And to be honest, I, I didn't like it. Even though they were pretty, I just didn't like the way that it turned out. It seemed a little bit too much for the design. So I really have stuck with this here. I really stuck with these little twinkles. And you can do a few different things with the twinkles. An extra dot here or there, or make them longer or shorter. Okay, that one's a little shorter. Then the other one, it's two dots out instead of three. Okay. Uh, let's see, you could. For example, uh, let's try something up here. What have we not used yet? I've got a spice to berry. Okay. It's really rich, dark color that I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me just stick that in there real nice and heavy. Now let's do it. I think the decoration is really the fun part of it all. So go crazy. <laughs> Have as much fun as you want to with this part. The other part is really nice. It's really, really relaxing. Um, you know, but you don't get to let off your creative steam as much. Whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. And then, like I said, I always come back in, especially at the end with this buttermilk or this whatever color. And just fill it in. Wherever. Go crazy. And there's no problem in kind of pausing in between as well because um, it does take just a minute to dry, especially being on the paper here. All of this dries super, super quick. So I have no problem um, coming back in and dotting in between these and not getting my hands filthy. Um, but do it however you like. All right, so uh, let's let's see. I've got this big one over here that maybe we should probably do in the dark green. 
I'm gonna keep this, actually, yeah, let's keep this kind of at a 2.5. Let's nestle that right in there. my palette just a little bit. Last thing I want is the edge of my paper to get in there. Did not load that one up nice. There. And the other good thing is, Ed, is the fact that you don't have to worry so much about consistency, okay? If your dots are a little bit jagged, a little bit, you know, off size, um, if the spacing isn't quite right, it just adds to the organic feel of it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Especially if you like decorating on the inside, keep these swirls nice and open. Use, um, I wouldn't say a small tool, especially as you get to towards the bottom. Um, but don't be afraid to, to kind of stay near like a three, four-ish size, something like that, whatever. Bring this up and there. Okay. With my swooshes, I've been kind of wanting to follow the natural curves here of these as we go up. This one's a little more difficult because this one comes out and around. Um, but what we could do, I could put one here. No, I think it, I don't want to do that. I could put one here. There is a space right here, um, but I sort of want to keep them going this general direction. So I'm not going to do that one. All right. But there are, there's a big drop here and here, and there's some other ones um, right in here. Uh, that we can absolutely do those and i think that would be much better all right so we're going to leave that one okay all right so now we probably want to get this one in here and then we'll do some more decorating i'm going to keep that same size and again, this is the 2.5. That's a little funny there. Okay, we're going to do a half dip on the bottom. All right, this one kind of comes, it doesn't quite come there, but you know what? I'm going to branch it out right here where these two sit. And as I mentioned uh, in the opening, little slides there if you're watching this if you've either popped in live or if you're catching the recording after I want to see what you guys have done I'm honestly really interested to see other people's interpretation of the same thing okay. if you're a member of the group drop it in the group please 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 if you're not, you can stop by my page. Again, that's just the Facebook, Sylvan Mist Designs. I really, really wanna see. <laughs> I don't know how many people are gonna watch this um, or actually follow along. Um, I don't know if you have dropped by today just to kind of check it out, um, just to watch it, just to see how things happen. Um, or if you really are working along with me. But if you are, like I said, I'd love to see it. Okay. 
think she likes to do this one here. Now, honestly, I don't know necessarily what I feel is better or easier. Either dotting the whole tree and then going back in or kind of doing it as you go. I think they're pretty similar. I don't think there's necessarily a whole bunch of difference between doing it one way or the other. Maybe doing it after the fact, though, does give you a little bit more of an overview and maybe would change your opinion on where things go. So feel free to wait. Okay. Got a little close with my desire to move along. And yeah, definitely. If this is going to be something that you want to try, Christmas cards, <laughs> you know, put this um, on the back side or front side, whatever, of a letter. You know, use the paper to draft a letter. I think it'd be super fun. Do you want to get a nice swoosh in here? This is a nice little crook. I pull my tools out every now and again and just kind of check my spacing and see sort of what's going to work where. Okay, let's get that one in here. Let's get a nice big drop. Constantly keep wiping your tools off. There's no reason not to just pause and do it. Save you a lot of trouble in the long run. Okay, midline. And pull, midline, and pull. Okay. There's that one. And I want one right here, I think. It's a little bit... A little, okay. it's a little sideways, but I think, I think we can get away with that. Let's see. One was all funny looking lopsided, wasn't it? I was thinking, yeah, let's let's curve it. Yeah, that's not a curve. That's so whatever that is. I don't know what this is now. That's okay. <laughs> all right, let's go. Now we've got a nice big line that comes down here and here. Let's do, okay, I'm just thinking about my colors here. How do I wanna do that? This one, I think I want the light green. All right, so we're gonna start to get into the larger sizes now. So let me grab my tool here. Again, I'm going to nestle that one right up in here. Especially with paper, make sure that your acrylic rod, if you're using the, whoa, hold on. If you're using the acrylic rod, that you have enough paint 
in order not to have to touch the surface. Especially with paper, if you touch the surface, it's like, it's going to pull your paper up. Then you're going to have something funky. Let's see, I think. Now this one is, you can do a couple of different things with this branch here. You can take this branch all the way down to this one, but in my case, I'm not. I'm actually going to grab it and take it over to this one here on this side. Okay, let's see. I can make this look round. Now, one thing I'm going to admit is I hate and I do not walk dots with acrylic rods. I just don't. I just don't like the feel of it. So what I do, probably the only time that I grab for these. Um, actually, this one I can probably, yeah, let's just give this a good dip. Again, you do not have to finish with the rod that you start with. It's not a rule. It's not a thing. <laughs> so I uh, don't think that it is. Swap tools as often as you like, as much as you need to. Okay, so let's take this one here. So as you can see, I'm just sort of progressing in size on the tools and staying consistent with that size for each level, like here, here, and then here. So basically all these down here will be the smaller acrylic rod size, which is a four. Wipe that off. I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, these nice little pearls. Now look at all this beautiful space. These are gonna be wonderful spots. I love these spots for sparkles, our little decorations. All right, this will be a nice spot right here for another swoosh. Since we're already in this size, I'm gonna stay with this size. Let's get another one in here. Wipe that out. Grab my tool, just draw where I want it to go.
Now I have this other one here that curls around and comes down right along this side. Now, actually, it, it looks like it connects, but it really kind of doesn't. So we are just going to do it our way. Okay, so let's see. What I might do is have it drop off here and curl and then have this one come off here instead of it actually kind of connecting the, the way that it actually does because I like that a little better. just barely touch the paint this is the part that's kind of the therapeutic stuff We're getting this finished up pretty quick. All right, what I am going to do here, um, let me go ahead and get these curls. And then we're going to go decorating crazy. Okay. It really does kind of feel like doing a real Christmas tree, especially if you've had a fake one. <laughs> the little while that it takes you to unpack everything, build it, you know, put it up, shake all of its leaves out, right? Make sure that it's looking straight and great, all fluffy. Um, and then you get to go crazy decorating. Although getting it out of the box or setting your live tree up is fun. That's, that's not that's not the good part. I'm just gonna keep that handy. All right, I think we're looking pretty good so far. And I still did get a little bit of paint on the edge here. That's okay. I can just chop that off. Okay, so let's do this one here. I'm actually gonna mix it up a little bit with the sides. And keep in mind, the farther or deeper you dip your paint, the more paint you have on your tool, the larger the tool is going to be, or the larger the dot is going to be. Um, so even though I'm using a three, if I'm, like I am here, a little bit more careless, I'm dipping all the way down, I'm putting a little bit more paint, the end dot is going to be slightly larger than a three. So if that's what you want, practice with that. This is a very, very good time to practice your consistency like that. Okay, well, a three would be, you know, if you're dipping halfway down, right? If you are using that measured midpoint, 
of the ball. But what happens if you don't? You know, what size are you going to get? So this is a really cool time to explore that and not have to worry about what it looks like. And let's go back to the mid green here and get our bottom one done. Personally, I want to be a little bit careful because for whatever godforsaken reason, every time I do this pattern, this bottom curl catches me and I end up making a sharp corner and not a curl. I don't know how or why. Every dang time. We are so close to being done. get another swoosh in here. Let's make sure I'm not going outside of the tree's natural bound. Bound. Get a nice heavy dot there. Okay. Let me look this up, sorry. Grab that midpoint. Go right up into the corner here. Just like a paintbrush. And then let's do another one right here. For the green. And these little swooshes are just accents. They're gonna blend right into all the other decoration. So if you don't like them, you're not comfortable, you don't want to do them, don't do them. But I suggest it. Just practice. Okay. All right. Now we could do some more swooshes if we want to, but I don't think I want to. I think I'm pretty happy, pretty content with it like that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, okay, I'm gonna drop in now. So we're gonna go back to, this is my ruby metallic. And again, it doesn't necessarily matter what size you choose. But now, let's get some stuff filled in. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here. Oops. 
Evet. And do whatever you like. Wipe my tools off. Okay, and let's find, so we have one, two. I like to sort of stay, I don't know why, proceedingness, I guess. Let's get another one in. See somewhere over here. And then you can also take these colors. And just put random dots of them around throughout the tree. And that works nice as decoration as well. Oops, I might go, let's see. In these spaces where I know I'm not going to be able to fit anything. All right, so that's probably all I'll do with the ruby. So I'm gonna tap that, put that one away. Okay, what's my next one is blue. So, so far I've only got one blue up here. And it's right there. So let's see, maybe get another one here on the edge. A little much. And maybe I can get something here. I'm gonna slow down just a little. Just because I don't want to get too carried away and start screwing stuff up. three of those. I'm just going to flip that over to the other side and let's get some dots in here. Get 
something maybe on this side. All right, I ended up with clean on my hands from the lid. There. All right, so now I've got this spiced berry color again. Let's see where we've got some good room up here. I'll leave again some room so I can put a small dot underneath. All right, so then I'm going to put a little one in between. And then we're going to come back in. Sparkle. How about another one? Can't really do a whole lot, but how about something in here? have to be four. It'd be three, right? There's no rules with this. I'm going to take and move up to the 2.1 and let's get some random dots in here. some of these little spaces. Okay. I think we need something up here. Almost done. Flip this over. Whatever fits. And let's 
something down here as well. Let's do. another sparkle here. Not finished with that one. But I am going to go ahead and lay down some dots before I change the size of the tool. Okay, let's go back over to this nice sharp one. See this part right here all these little sparkles that I do because I know they might be kind of boring to do. This is one of the parts where I would really love to see what other people are doing. Be totally interesting to see how other people handle these spaces. Okay. And last but not least, I think we need something, something here in the middle. So let me see if I can get something in there. Make that a little bigger just so it stands out. Let's get real small again. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm going to take the other end, and again, let's just do a quick. I love the sparkle of the metallics on the Christmas tree. So I want to use a lot of them. You don't have to. Okay. And as you can see, I'm just sort of drop whatever. I'm not going to say it's completely quote unquote careless. But it's certainly nothing that you need to be concerned about messing up. Okay. All right. So let's get into our buttermilk because our buttermilk is sort of our big filler here. I am going to go into the rod first. Let's get that. And let's pick up some of these bigger spaces that weren't quite big enough maybe for a shape, but need something in them. We're going to start there. Okay. All right, one more here. Now I'm going to drop down to my 2.5 and again I'm just going to load that up really really well. And just like kind of walking dots I'm not reloading it until it's empty. There we go. Let's get that in there. Okay. And you can do the different colors as the filler. You can do gems. I was thinking about doing that myself on some of the ones that I use for Christmas cards. 
um, if you have little blingy gems or something like that uh, that you want to use, stick those on there. I think that's a fantastic idea. Okay, I don't want to get so crazy that it doesn't, you know, go together, but at the same time, I keep seeing all these little spaces that I want to fill. However, I think this is going to conclude it for us. All right. Okay, so I hope at least somebody stopped by and decided to actually do this. It's so fun and I want to see it. I really, really want to see what you guys do with this. Okay. All right, I think we're done. All right, what do you guys think? Was that fun? Um, do you think you're actually going to do it? Uh, what? What's the verdict? Right? <laughs> okay. All right. So all I'm going to do now is just a quick wipe of all my tools. And we're good to go. Okay. I'm going to zoom out for you guys. Get the whole picture. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate anyone that stopped by. I hope you have a fantastic day. Enjoy your holidays. May they be healthy, happy, and bright.